Good morning, everyone. I'm Marcia McNutt. I'm president of the National Academy of Sciences, and it's my extreme pleasure to welcome you to this colloquium, Creativity and Collaboration, Revisiting Cybernetic Serendipity. I have very much been looking forward to this event uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, this, has been, this is really, I think, one of the more creative uh, presentations of thought and um, uh, art and music and um, science uh, all coming together that uh, we've done here at the Academy. Um, this is part of our Arthur M. Sackler Colloquium program. It's now in its 18th year. Uh, each colloquium brings together a diverse group of researchers on a topic of current and broad interest, um, which includes people who would not ordinarily have an opportunity to meet. And that's why I think this particular colloquium really stands out because of the breadth and uh, interest in terms of the kinds of people that have been brought together for the next two days. For example, uh, recent colloquia we have had include topics on the science of science communication, uh, reproducibility of research issues and proposed remedies, and modeling and visualizing science and technology developments. Now, uh, every colloquia we have, um, the proposals for them are reviewed um, and approved by the National Academy of Sciences Committee on Scientific Programs, and then they are planned by one of our Academy members with the assistance of a organizing committee. Now, the committee for this particular colloquium on creativity and collaboration had a very daunting task and I think they should be commended for their tireless efforts to bring together such a diverse group of speakers and participants. So I'd like to start today by thanking uh, the organizing committee for this meeting. First of all, the National Academy of Engineering member, Ben Schneiderman, who's seated right here. Ben, thank you very much. He chaired the committee, as well as Manish Agarwala, Manish, can you wave to your adoring fans? Thank you. Um, Alyssa Goodman, who is right here up front. Uh, Yangmu Kim from Drexel University, right there. And Roger Manila. Roger? Ah, right over there, yes, in the front row as well. Okay, great. Um, they uh, put in many hours, probably thousands of emails, phone calls, and a planning meeting that were devoted to putting this together. So thank you all for this um, labor of what I hope was love in organizing this meeting. Um, now the theme for this colloquium, Cybernetic Serendipity, is tied to an exhibit that took place at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London 50 years ago. It was the first exhibition to attempt to demonstrate all the aspects of computer-aided creativity. Art, music, poetry, dance, sculpture, and even 50 years ago, animation. It was an intellectual exercise that became a spectacular exhibition in the summer of 1968. And boy, does that make me feel old to think that the summer of 68 was 50 years ago. Here at the academies, we value the great benefits that the partnership between science and art can bring to our society. This notion inspired this colloquium, which is organized in conjunction with a series of events united under the Art Plus Technology Week that is taking place from March 12th through March 18th here in our building at the National Academy. Now I'd like to mention for you a couple other events that include three public lectures and three exhibits that are happening during this Art Plus Technology Week. Now tonight, uh, Smithsonian Institution Secretary David Scorton will deliver the 18th annual Sackler Lecture called Branches from the Same Tree. His title is drawn from Albert Einstein's statement that, quote, religions, arts, and sciences 
are branches of the same tree, unquote. Now on March 15th, Jiza Reichart, the curator of the original 1968 Cybernetic Serendipity exhibit, will discuss its rich legacy with Klaus Ottmann, Deputy Director for Curatorial and Academic Affairs of the Phillips Collection. This conversation is hosted at the Academy's DC Art Science Evening Rendezvous, otherwise known as DAZER series. It's a monthly forum on art science projects that provides a snapshot of the cultural environment of the region and fosters interdisciplinary networking. For seven years, DAZER has brought together creative practitioners from art science design and technology and salons that encourage cross-disciplinary dialogue and conversation. Then on March 18th, multidisciplinary um, artist R. Luc Dubois will talk about his work and process with Anne Collins Goodyear, co-director of the Bowden College Music of Art in Bowden, Maine. You note that there's a gap here for March 17th for all the Irish among us to do what we do on St. Patrick's Day. Then um, Luke's uh, exhibition, Love in the Time of Data, in the Upstairs Gallery, is one of the three ongoing exhibitions that were organized by the Office of Cultural Programs as part of the Art Plus Technology Week, uh, tied to the theme of the colloquium. The other are Paul Brown's Process Chants and Serendipity Art that make, Makes Itself, and Agua Hoya by Neri Oxman, and the Mediated Matter Group at the MIT Media Lab in our West Gallery. The colloquium activities also include yesterday's student symposium. I hope some of you were able to attend that. Uh, the symposium was entitled Role Play, Collaborative Creativity and Creative Collaborations. That was funded by generous support of the Sackler Foundation and Google Inc. The symposium showcased the work of more than 50 graduate students in science and art from across North America who were selected from among several hundred applicants. Some of their work is on display in the East Court and Lecture Room, which is that direction, uh, where you can see it uh, during the lunch break, so I urge you to wander down there. Um, I'd like to thank Leslie Zahabi, who is from the University of Maryland College Park, and Molly Morin from Weber State University for their efforts in organizing the student symposium and for the beautiful artwork used on the colloquium materials, which I understand were handmade, put together. Uh, in spring of 2016, the Academy's Board on Higher Education and Workforce launched a study to examine the impacts of educational experiences that intentionally integrate the humanities, arts, with science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and medicine on students at the undergraduate levels. I understand that report is in review now and should be out any day now, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the results of that report. I had heard now for a couple years about some innovative programs that rather than chopping up the students' days into now we go to art class, now we go to history class, now we go to current events, uh, now we go to science class. They would instead integrate these. So when you learn about uh, history and about the um, uh, Renaissance, you learn about the science of the Renaissance, the art of the Renaissance, the politics of the Renaissance, the history of the Renaissance, all in an integrated fashion. And so uh, I think this report is going to be very interesting about how students really learn when everything is integrated rather than um, divided up. Then with support from the Mellon Foundation, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the National Endowment for Humanities, um, uh, this study committee is, um, uh, uh, mutual, is integrating these learning experiences um, which is uh, science, technology, engineering, um, math, and medicine, which is STEM mum, I think. Um, which is, uh, and they're going to uh, understand how that leads to improved education and career outcomes for students. 
and David Scorton, who's this evening's lecturer, um, uh, actually uh, chaired that committee, and um, so I'm sure he'll mention it uh, at tonight's lecture. Uh, I'm very grateful to Secretary Scorton for his leadership. He's a physician, a musician, a former president of a university, and now leadership of the Smithsonian. That's an organization that itself embodies the integration of the humanities, arts, and STEM disciplines. So there was no better person to actually lead that effort. Finally, I'd like to express our gratitude to Jill Sackler. She has had unwavering commitment to scientific progress by providing major support for the colloquium series in memory of her husband, Arthur M. Sackler. And I'd like to call upon Jill to make some her own words of welcome for this colloquium.